Moldana is uh, live, which is great again. Okay. Yep. So if I may do my introductions to uh, Laudana. Laudana is an independent midwife and freelance midwifery teacher. She completed her BSc in midwifery and a master's degree at King's College and City University of London. And she's also a certified acupuncturist specialising in obstetric acupuncture. She teaches nationally and internationally a workshop for midwives on the use of acupressure for pregnancy and birth. Since introducing the acupressure for pregnancy and birth workshop in Italy, many hospitals are introducing acupressure for labour preparation, induction of labour and for pain relief. She's using acupressure as part of her clinical practice, facilitating home birth and supporting women for labour preparation and induction of labour. She strongly advocates the use of acupressure internationally, as it will allow midwives to expand their role, becoming more complete and independent practitioners. Acupressure being drug free and therefore not having any harmful tetragenic effect provides a much safer and satisfying childbirth experience, as well as facilitating a more natural and less medicalized childbirth. Welcome and welcome from Italy. Nice. Nice, nice everybody. I'm very happy to be here with this international conference. So this is a, a pre-recorded. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Which uh, I'm, all I'm, open to, I'm open to all questions after. I'm very pleased to answer the questions. I'm very happy to be here to present this case study, acupressure for induction and augmentation labor to an international audience. My name is Loredana, I'm a midwife acupuncturist, and I work as an independent midwife in Italy. Thank you. I just, first of all, I want to acknowledge Deborah Beth and Sarah Bart, which are two brilliant acupuncturists, Sarah Bart, she's a midwife as well, for their inspiration and their permission to share some of their material. I've been working a lot with them, teaching together and sharing our love for Chinese medicine. Um, you can get a link, Deborah Betts. She's very happy to share all the information in her link, Resozone.net, which is there. You get a lot of information about acupressure. And there is uh, the leaflet, it's been translated in six seven languages, including Italian. Uh, basically, here is the case study I'm presenting. Is a present a report case of successful use of acupressure for induction of labor for a post maturity in a home birth situation. Post-maturity, we all know, they can pose a high risk for the unborn child, increase the risk of stillbirth, particularly after 42 weeks. So obviously you need to do something after 42 weeks. Um, first of all, I need to discuss a little bit of the theory of Chinese medicine. Obviously, it's a big, big subject, Chinese medicine. In order to be a knowledge, you need to have a lot of study a lot, just to give a basic information. Uh, about what is qi, what is meridian. Meridian can be translated as an energy of life force. It's a very energ it's energetic form of a vapor, which has got a lot of power. If you think about it, it can, got a, uh, it can actually lead, such as lifting the lid of the pot. So you don't see, but it's actually very powerful. In fact, what we call Chinese medicine is an energetic medicine. Um, this qi, if it's um, if it goes way into the meridian, it will make you feel better, you feel okay, otherwise you get sick. Um, qi, this energy, flow to the channel, which are called channel or meridian, which are like a network of river that travel our entire body and connect to our main organs. If you think about really like a river in China, in China you get this big river that go to the sea, so these are the meridian, which transfer the qi in all our body. And what is acupressure? Acupressure is actually, it's not a massage, it's a pressure on uh, to acupuncture point. Acupuncture point is situated on the channel of all meridians. It's the same point basically uh, Chinese medicine, Chinese doctor use with acupressure. How does it work? There is a different way, different school of thought. The, the first theory, I mean, if we're talking about there is a different, like a Chinese theory in a way, like I mentioned before, qi is important. So acupressure is a technique that balance energy of qi in the body. Uh, in fact, if our energy is in balance, 
you feel okay in your body and your mind. Uh, according to the more Western concept of China, of, of this of the acupressure work, uh, acu the acupressure will be using a very, very strong effect on the blood flow to the uterus, which promotes cervical dilatation, increase the and, and most of all, increase the release of prostaglandin or cytosine, which is the uh, hormone, which is very important for promoting the cervical dilatation, which our body produces. There's actually acupressure seem to increase this production. Uh, another important aspect is that it facilitates the production of endorphin. Endorphin are a, uh, a hormone that our body produces, and it makes feel better, makes feel less the pain. And most of all, it seems to help in the mother to relax, uh, promote physical and emotional well-being. We all know for experience as a midwife, if a woman is relaxed, she will go back in the pain and she will, the level will start. A lot of the time, all the emotional problems the woman can have, like anxiety and frustration, the level, the level doesn't start. So endorphins you know, and normal which are very important. Um, and then really I'm talking for myself and for me to give the feedback. Uh, I've been teaching acupressure for induction level and for pain relief to many Italian midwives. Um, they seen the feedback I got is that they really found that there is a difference whether they use the point, the level will start much sooner. Even in New Zealand, midwives are using 60% of midwives in New Zealand using acupuncture and acupressure. Uh, Deborah Tabet, she's been teaching them, and we really, really have a very good feedback. Uh, I think we compare at the moment, we go like a conventional method of industrial labor we use our prostaglandin, which is a vaginal gel, which is used for industrial labor. It does work by softening and facilitating the dilatation of the service. But there's been a cocaine systematic review that say that concluded that vaginal prostaglandin is very effective on uh, starting labor. However, there is no sort of, um, it doesn't seem to increase the rate of cesarean section. However, what can cause the risk of, there is a higher risk of uterine hyperstimulation, which increase the risk of fetal distress. Um, and then another, oxytocin is used as well, it's the most common induction agent. Oxytocin is used as well, not only for induction labor, but for augmentation and labor. We all need while you work in hospital, uh, you use oxytocin only when the compression stops. And they, they can be very useful. I'm not saying that, do, that don't help for facilitating labor. However, uh, what the oxytocin does, does they make the contraction much stronger, which uh, block, it cut off the blood and oxygen to the fetus. Can, they can cause fetal distress. What are the advantages of acupressure? It's a non-invasive invasive technique, can be applied easily by birthing partner, uh, the midwife, the people standing with the woman in labor, and this promotes birthing and partner involvement. It's comfortable, it's not painful, and it's safe. We see after doing some research, it's actually safe. And uh, it does increase the chance of a woman progressing through a medical induction, we mean the intervention with this cascade of intervention. Which I'm talking about cascade of intervention, I believe that the more you follow the physiology of labor, you don't interfere in natural in a way, there is less problem. Um, if you think about it, as we were talking before, if you use oxytocin, the contraction can be more much stronger. The body doesn't have the time, doesn't have the time to uh, cope with the contraction. And obviously, you might have like uh, once an epidural, and the epidural can actually make uh, increase, we all know, increase the chance of instrumental delivery. Is what I'm talking about, what I'm, I think all, all midwives know what I'm talking about, cascade of intervention. Um, another important aspect which I really strongly is very important is that the woman feel empowered through action. They feel they can do something for themselves and give them control and confidence during birth. Being in control is very important because they can be more with them, in their body, in their mind, and they're coping better with the whole process of labor. Um, in fact, there's been a nice research, a cochlear review, it's like a, a randomized control trial, um, where, in 2016, Moller et al. said that 
women feel more empowered. They are very happy. They were very compliant with their search. They, they felt empowered. Not only the woman, but the midwife as well. Midwife think that it was a good question supporting employing women, giving more choice, uh, empowering them. So the case study I'm presenting here is a my one of, um, as I said before, I'm an independent midwife. I provide uh, my, uh, I really like Combra. This is my sort of, uh, I strongly believe in, in Combra. And this woman, I, she's a 30 years old, pretty gravida, is one of my women, I believe. Um, it's book, it's been, she was booked for Combra. I usually work with another midwife, so provided Combra. And uh, there was an hospital induction which was booked at 41 plus 5 with registration. In Italy, we tend to use booked women at 41 plus 5 for post maturity. Um, three days before the medical induction was due, a bishop score was uh, below 6, which indicated that cervical writing was, in, was indicated. Um, I suggest the couple, I think we've been talking with the couple before, they were very keen. Um, to have a home birth, they really they prefer not to go to, to the hospital and be induced. So I suggest them to use start using acupressure to promote cervical dilatation. Um, I train them. I make sure they're using the point correctly before I leave. I left the house. Um, I was called after two days as she was contracting. When I go there in the house, uh, I just noticed that the contraction were not. So it is low down, they were not regularly, which is normal. Like the first time I then takes, you know, sometimes it takes some you know, takes longer. And then I use um I use the point which we see after. There is some point, two points which I use for argumentation of labor. Uh, after one hour, the contraction becomes more regular, three, four in ten minutes. Or I did the vaginal examination because she was contracting regularly. The finding was that the service was a face anterior and the os was six centimeter dilated, cephalic, presentation confirmed with the station of the eastern spine. After four hours, the service was fully dilated. She was being contacted regularly. At the same time, I've been using some point for pain relief. And she had a, after one hour, she had a spontaneous birth of vaginal delivery of a male infant born in a very good condition. And, Three kilo, big baby, three kilo in time. So altogether, I mean, it's been one hour, one hour. It's been a short labor if you talk about, if you think about being a partner. Um, okay, I think we need to discuss all the points that I've been using. Um, the first point is large intestine four. Large intestine four between the thumb and the forefinger, you need to apply firm pressure five, ten seconds of the thumb. So it's like a pulsating. And this seems to promote lab labor, tonify the chi, give energy, and is more efficient to use together with spleen six. Large intestine four. There are two ways to locate this point. The first is halfway between the metacarpal bone that runs from the knuckle to the wrist joint. The second is when you place the thumb of the woman against her first finger and locate it over the highest point of the muscle. To use this point, simply apply firm pressure. The other point we did use, the couple used, was spleen six. Was, was it, it, spleen six is on the spleen meridian. It's located by using four of the woman's finger with above tip of the medallion medial malleolus in a depression just behind the tibia. Um, can be a very sensitive point, just have to go back from the tibia, posterior to the tibia. And um, promote cervical dilatation over in, invigorating the C circulation and increase the, the prostaglandin you know, oxytocin. This is a very important point, and it's called in Chinese like an ecological point. This point as well you can use for when you go like um, pain like the menstrual period. All these points are used are bilateral. I'm going to describe this point because it's just the music, but it's just I'm going to explain how it works. Basically, it's four for the woman finger 
above the tip of the malleolum. You just found it just behind the tibia. You need to go inward. Usually it's a very sensitive point. You need to remember to use the fourth of the woman finger um, to locate it. Okay? And it just you do like a pressure, it's bilateral, as I mentioned before, all the points are bilateral. You can do it's for five minutes. It's a study on spleen 60. It's been an Iranian study on the use of acupressure on spleen 6. What they did, they use acupressure on spleen 6 for five minutes at a time for 20 minutes. The women were between 39 and 41 weeks. And this is a very interesting study. It actually showed that acupressure is a safe technique and lead to cervical lightening. Actually, the Bishop's score was announced after 48 hours, it was more than seven in the research performed acupressure group. But what is more interesting about this study is that um, this, the study suggests that it's more beneficial, it's more effective, seem to um, provide a better cervical dilatation if it's the woman that actually used the point on her side, which it makes sense in a way from the Chinese point of view that if the woman um, located the point. She knows exactly where it is uh, because, as I said before, it can be a very sensitive point. point. Um, so the point will be more effective. It's got more effective. And tonifying the chi, energize, energize the chi circulation. And then we've got another point is on the bladder meridian. It's called bladder 32. Um, it's located over the second sacrum foramen. Facilitating cervical dilatation. If you will just bring down the chi, the energy into the pelvis, it's the point that you use as well when, when there is like anterior lifts. So it's a very effective point. Um, it's a point that you use up for pain relieving labor as well. Bladder 32. To locate bladder 32, you locate the dimples in the lower back. The point lies between these dimples and the spine. If you move from the dimple down towards the spine, you'll be able to feel around for a little bony hollow that lies on in the, within the bony pelvis. If we look at the, a bony pelvis, you can see that there are these little hollows. What you're doing is placing your knuckle and your finger over top of these hollows and applying pressure. This is the bony prominence that creates the dimples. This is the spine and you move down from these dimples to find the exact location of the hollow. When you press on this point over the hollow, it will feel quite different to the woman than if you're pressing on a bony part of the spine. If you have trouble locating, visually locating the dimples, you can use the tip of the, um, the top of the buttock crease here and use the length of the woman's index finger. It will lie approximately around her knuckle the length of her knuckle joint. If you measure her finger against yours and then come up and move out from the spine to palpate for this bony hollow. It's very important when you, when you palpate this point that the point does not feel tender. If it does, you are probably pressing on bone. So if you move around to locate the bony hollow, you can then put your knuckle into this point to provide strong pressure for the woman during the contraction. Then we got gallbladder 21. It's the most tender point is on the in the gallbladder meridian. Uh, it's the most tender point halfway between C7 and tip of shoulder joint acromion, process of the top of the trapezium muscle. It's a strong downward movement. This is a point is very good to use this relax the muscle and this bring the energy down. It's a very point, good point to use as well in this high head. A particular seem to facilitate it because they bring the energy down. Gallbladder 21. To locate gallbladder 21, you need to use two bony markers. The first is in the neck. If you ask the woman to push it to put her neck forward, you will find that if you run your fingers down her neck, you'll, there is a bony prominence. If you just leave your index finger there, there's also a bony prominence in the tip of the shoulder, and the point lies approximately halfway between these two markers. So if you palpate down this line, or press firmly, you will find, you'll be able to locate the point. So if I go one, two, three, four, five, the woman will be able to tell me which point is the most tender. 
So for example, if I go back to three, I can then press firmly with my knuckle or my elbow to the pressure that feels most comfortable for her. Now it is important to find this bony marker here in the shoulder so that while you are going down this line to find the point, you do not go over to the top or too far back from the shoulder. This is the line where the gallbladder 21 is found. How do I, how we are using this point? As I say, I tend to show the couple to use it. Uh, another important thing is that don't use before, this point before the medical induction is booked. Don't use only a 39 week, for instance, just because a woman was a social, want a social induction, because they are very strong point and you actually can stimulate a labor when the body is not ready. The hormone are not ready for delivery. So you don't know how the labor is going to be. So we are, we are interfering and we prefer not the safety point of view. So as I say before, you can start using three days before the medical induction is booked. Um, I think you can use, there is like an old bilateral in the meridian. You, can, you must use, which is more effective, use large intestine four and spleen six or use together bilaterally every two hours. What the woman can do, the woman can use large intestine four, for instance, in one, one um, arm, okay, like this, at this point, in one arm. And the midwife or the support people can use on split six on the opposite side. And then you change. Either. So you must cover all four points. And you can do every two hours, okay? Um, and then you use bladder 32, a gold bladder 21 twice a day. Obviously, if you go only one day, you just call the woman to be induced, the woman will provide care that she needs to be induced for medical reasons. It's just on one day, you can do more often bladder 32 and gold bladder 21. So this is the point. As I say, it's a bi bi point, this point are bilateral. It's, not, uh, it's like uh, not a massage, it's actually a pressure. You need to be a pressure comfortable label, it shouldn't be painful. Uh, but the woman can feel some sort of, uh, some point are very sensitive, particularly splits or gold bladder 21, this issue is a lot of, sort of tension. That is very nice to have like a relax, to be relaxer. And then this is, Ineffective contraction during labor. As I mentioned before, whenever you, you're looking after a woman and you notice the contraction of low down, um, instead of using <laughs> oxytocin, uh, obviously you can try use um, acupressure, which is on large intestine four and on spleen six. As I say, you need to use all four points and you can repeat it for you need to use for about 15, 20 minutes until the contraction starts to become regular. From my experience, I really not if you use those points combined, the contraction become more regular. I think just to talk about the research, um, because we strongly, I strongly believe in the medicine which is evidence-based. However, it can be very difficult sometimes having a good research on acupressure because of the number, the not mean number, scientific use, not a big number. However, there's been a study, which is uh, in Gram et al, 2005, is a non-randomized control trial, found that women experience a fourth day pregnancy who use acupressure were significantly more likely to labor spontaneously than those who did not. Uh, However, this is not, as I say, a no randomized control trial. The number is not a big number. So we can, it's not really a significant statistically. However, it's a start. I think we need to be, there's going to be a new, more study with a bigger sample. And obviously the more use, women will use at the pressure, the more like you have a bigger sample. It can cause like a statistically significant conclusion. And then there's another review by Mola in 2015, reported acupressure on spleen six and on large intestine four might reduce the length of labor, particularly in the first stage. We did see before that the, um, the score was uh, Bishop's score is higher if you use acupressure and it seemed to shorten the first stage of labor as well as a result. And then there is a bigger review 
which I think is one of the most important review on induction, which is, um, is a Cochrane review, 22 trials, 3,456 women. This review concluded acupressure showing no, no evidence of benefit. However, uh, there is only four trials involved acupressure. You can see the number it is only to compare with usual care, 155 women, so not a big number, to sham control. 239. I think you need to have at least 1,000 women to have like this good result. So, from my point of view, I think that it's not conclusive. I strongly believe that although we don't have a Cochrane review that said, okay, it definitely is effective, uh, I think there is a good chance that this is working. At least you're helping the woman. She feel empowered, you're helping the woman to do any safe. In fact, there is this the same review specified that um, acupuncture occupation for induction of labor and reporting not known adverse effect to the fetus and to the mothers being not any problem, which means safe. However, it's very important that, as I mentioned before, those points are not to be used before 37 weeks, as we can stimulate the labor. Uh, these points are bladder, the same point, bladder 32, spleen 6. Good blood at 21, virgin test time 4. So no use before 37 weeks at all. Um, the women, I think it concluded, uh, it was a very nice home birth because the women and their partner were very satisfied with their best experience, especially as they could have the home birth they wanted. They avoided being admitted to the hospital for a medical induction and preventing potential problems which might occur during the medical induction process. Because as I said before, you are interfering. And although you, you know, that is important, you have the woman that you need to induce, uh, if you can avoid with a safe method like acupressure, I think it's a good, it's a good result. Um, I think this is in relation to medical practice, which I think is, is important, is that uh, from my point of view, and to the, from, to the midwife, midwife I've been teaching, which is quite a lot in Italy and internationally, I think they feel that uh, they, are, they, they feel more empowered, they become more complete and independent practitioners, to pra and they practice in different fully. They can have more things to offer to women. Um, uh, and then, particularly being a drug free and no harmful teratogenic effect, using acupressure will provide better care to women, will provide much safer and satisfying childbirth experience. This needs to be considered implication for education and recommendation for practice. I believe that educational providers, hospitals, and universities should concentrate on providing short courses on acupressure. After this training, midwife will be able to facilitate in the induction label using acupressure. In fact, I can say for first time experience since I've been introducing this acupressure for midwife in Italy, a lot of uh, hospitals are calling me. I've been training some of all the staff in the hospital and they're using it and we're starting collecting some data. Um, I think it's important that talking about results and research, Midwives are willing to carry out research and are prepared to enhance their knowledge about acupressure and start using acupressure within their practice. The more they use, the more they can get results. Uh, especially, they want to meet women's needs and choices regarding childbirth. More and more women, from my experience, they like to use complementary therapy because they think it's safer for their child, and so you need to offer more choice. Very happy to answer all the questions, and um, I really hope that this will just stimulated your interest in buying this subject of Chinese medicine. Thank you for listening. Thank you very much, Rodana. She is uh, live just to answer some questions. There are quite a few, and I'm conscious of the okay. time, but we did Thank start you. a little bit late. Um, so if I may just say these. Um, this is from Kate. 
Thank you very much for the interesting presentation in relation to induction augmentation. Are there clips that we as non-trained HCPs can signpost women birthing people to in order for them to do this without the support of a trained professional, please? I don't know if that could be a quick answer. Yeah, no, no, I think it's an interesting question, so it'll be quick. Um, Basically, like we are doing like induction, you need to sort of rely, uh, you, you can help women if you're you know, not professional. However, you need to link with the professional, okay? And with the midwife and even the midwife that knows ac acupression. Uh, my advice is to speak with the people that are involved with the care, okay, like obstetrician, is a high risk. However, um, the most important thing is to know the point that you shouldn't use before 37 weeks, okay? And don't use the point, because as I said before, they're very powerful point. Don't use this point just because for a social induction, for instance, okay? Like the one want to be used because you are causing more problem. So obviously you need to be knowledge, but I don't see, especially for the point for pain relief in labor, okay? I don't see that if you got the knowledge, we are talking acupressure, we're not talking about acupuncture, okay? Um, which is different, okay? So basically, if you got a good knowledge, you've been to a training, I really usually this training, I prefer to do like a face-to-face, -face, like, you know, personal training. And I think if you like to support women, you do follow a training. And as I said before, most important thing, you link with the obstetric, you link with the people that are caring for the woman. Um, I think you should, you should use it with all the precaution. Okay. Lovely. Thank you. Um, again, I'm because Roman says a very big thank you from Noreen on the presentation. Interesting one from Lauren. This is for her fellow attendees as well, um, asking do anyone else, does anyone else use acupuncture in their practice? Is it accepted in your workplace? Curious as nice guidelines do not support midwives the use of acupressure. That's come up in a couple of different ways um, with guidelines, oh, yeah. Trish. Yeah and Abbe as well. I think with the NICE guideline, there's been some sort of, um, uh, especially with some sort of for pain relief and for induction as well. The reason is not on the guideline, on the NICE guideline, because there's been some research used, like recent research with Cochrane, they seem that it is not effective. However, I think that because there are not many, it's not a big study, so you need a bigger study, uh, to prove that acupressure is effective. And mainly, there is more study on acupuncture, not on acupressure. Uh, just to be quick, there is an experience, I know in a university college hospital, they train the midwife to use acupuncture, only to their trainings, which is, I think is not good enough. Uh, and then there is a written policy. So um, what I'm saying is that it should be nice if his midwife can learn in one day workshop. I strongly believe in doing one shot one day, two days. And what is happening in Italy, then you do the guideline, so the hospital guideline, and then you practice, you start to collect in data. What I'm trying to say is that it's safe. It's not like you're using acupuncture. It's safe if you've got the guideline. I don't see a reason why it shouldn't be introduced in the NHS. As I said, in Italy, we start using it. We got good results. And as I repeat myself, it's a safe method. So just a question of introducing the change to the system. Thank you. One from Danala just saying um, that hospital policy says that they can't use it, but if the woman wants to, so presumably that's her choice issue. Kate came back and said that she used it on her own third birth. Okay. Hayley um, thinks that yes, students should be trained to facilitate the method, which you mentioned. Another thank yeah. you. Um, so there's lots coming up. You've got 10 messages, which we certainly haven't got time, but I thank no, you no, for the questions. Um, as you can see, LaDonna is live, so she will, I'm sure, get back to everyone. Um, but I guess on a professional level, we need to be very clear where we stand, not just professionally with our organisations, but of course, those who employ us with um, our issues of vicarious liability. Yeah, no. yeah, guidelines are definitely a, a huge issue. So may I thank our three speakers this morning. I know Tanya wasn't live, but Tanya, Alison, and obviously Ladana. There is time now for some um, lunch, but there are other sessions running. Um, RC experts are running.
So please do, if you have time with your sandwich at your side, then please do, but please take the break and rejoin us or myself or other colleagues on the other sessions at 1.30. And we'll see you then. And thank you again to all our presenters this morning. Thank you very much.